Good morning, family. In the psalm today, we hear, taste and see that the Lord is good. And God invites each of us this morning to try everything that's on the menu, the lessons and the liturgy and the music and the movement and the sound and the sacrament and the silence to see how He is present with us and to allow Him to touch us and encourage us and heal us and love us and change us. For those of you joining us online, hello, welcome, glad you're here. If you have a prayer request, go back out to the website, and along the top, there's a virtual yellow prayer card, and if you click on that and fill it out, I will pray for you and your request every day this week. And for those of you who are here, if you will fill out a yellow card and let us know that you're here, put that in the plate when it goes by, the basket when it goes by, and if you have a prayer request, that goes on the back, and I will pray for you and your request every day this week. Lots of stuff happening. They've got a fat bulletin. Please read all of that. And we have a commercial. Hey, Wendy, what you doing? I'm making a note on my calendar for November 4th. It's the 15th annual Church of the Messiah's Ladies' Night Out. Oh, yes. I love that event. We'll have vendors like Pampered Chef, Home Goods, Crafts, and so much more. Did you know there'll be an online auction? We'll also have refreshments and fun. Do you need items donated? for the baskets or the online auction? I'm so glad that you asked, yes. Items can be dropped off at the church's office and more information can be found on the website. Great, see you on November 4th. See you then. Let's stand and sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Clean the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our song of praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you come in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Dismissed to follow Miss Angela for Children's Church. Good morning. A reading from the book of Job. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with the words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footing set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted with joy. Job answered the Lord, I know you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand things too wonderful for me for which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. 
I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now see my, now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job's more than his beginning, and he had found 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapa. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's, his daughters. And their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 100 years, 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm today is Psalm 34, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 627 and on the screen. Let's read this by the half verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him, and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affection, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those, those who fear, fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those, but those who seek the Lord shall lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will, I will teach, teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life? And desires and desire long life, life to enjoy, enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil speaking. And your lips from lying words. words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them. And delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who make the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. The second reading today is from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of his people. 
he sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Let's stand and sing. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Every Sunday this month, we've been walking a step through the puzzling and disturbing Old Testament story of Job. Job, whom God calls blameless and upright, my best guy whom God blesses with riches and respect and children. Job, whom the enemy, Satan, and remember that's what the Hebrew word for enemy is, Satan. Job, whom Satan targets to rob, kill, and to destroy. And because Satan and God, and because Job and God are such good friends, Satan goes and asks God and gets permission to steal Job's stuff, kill his kids, and ruin his health. Now, Job thinks God did this. And in his despair, he sits down and he says, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this, Job hangs on to his faith, hope, and love. Now, we think, we know that God didn't do it. Job doesn't. Which makes Job look pretty heroic in his faith, doesn't it? But since no good deed goes unpunished, Job's friends come to cheer him up. And as they do, they believe, along with Job and his wife, that God is the cause of all this trouble. And since God sends good things to good people and bad things to bad thing, people, that for Job to have this much bad in his life, he must be really, really bad. 
So to help out his friends, they spend 35 chapters ganging up on him and taking turns, confronting him and trying to remind him of all the things he must have done to deserve all of this yuck. Now, with no evidence at all, they accuse him of lying, cheating, stealing, committing adultery, murder, cursing God, mistreating his neighbors, and forgetting his wife's birthday. (laughs) Now, they really don't accuse him of that last one, but somewhere in the story, Job cries out, my breath is offensive to my wife, as every wife can attest happens from time to time. You know it's true. But Job responds in those 35 chapters, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. I've been good. Now, in those chapters, Job also complains about his pains, wishes he'd never been born, and he looks forward to death when he can rest in peace. He says, I know my Redeemer lives, and in the end I shall see Him face to face, and oh, how I long for that day. Now, as much as Job longs for that day of his death, he does nothing to hasten it. When we despair of life, it's okay to look forward to death and the rest and peace that it brings. It's not okay to help it happen. God is the one who gives us life at our conception, and He's the only one with the right to determine when our life ends. Well, early in the story, Job is heroic, and the Bible reports Job did not sin by anything he said. Unfortunately, however, he doesn't know when to stop talking. Cowboy wisdom says, never miss a good chance to shut up. And Job ignores that wisdom. And the more he talks, the sadder and the madder he gets at his situation and at God. And over all of those chapters, arguing with his friends about his innocence, Job goes from, blessed be the name of the Lord, to I wish I'd never been born, to God, why is all of this happening to me, to God, this is not fair, I've been good, to God you want a piece of me? To God, you've been unkind and unjust. To God, I thought you were my friend, but you're my enemy. Job's words move from praise to pain to anger to lamentation, just as Jesus did on the cross when He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And all of those are understandable and valid human emotions when we are in agony. And praying the Psalms gives us words to express every human emotion. But in chapter 31, Job crosses the line from trusting God in his pain to accusing God of being unmerciful, unkind, unjust, and in so doing, Job calls God his enemy. Do you remember what the Hebrew word for enemy is? Satan. When Job calls God his enemy, Job is calling God Satan. And as soon as he does that, he proves that the real enemy, the real Satan was right. Back in the beginning of the story, when he says to God, you know, Job loves you only because you've been good to him. And though Job never actually curses God to his face like the enemy says he will, he does call God unkind, unjust, and the enemy, Satan. It just takes 31 chapters for that ugly truth to float up to the surface. That's because people are like tubes of toothpaste. You really don't know what's inside of them until you squeeze them. And Job has been squeezed for 31 chapters, and finally the yuck that's deep inside of him oozes out, and here it is. You know, God, as long as you're doing okay running the universe and my life is good, I'm going to let you do it. But when things get bad, and not just a little bad, I mean really bad, and they have, you know, you drop the ball, and you need to explain yourself to me, and if you're not competent to curate creation, you know what, step aside, I'll take it on. Oh, if we're really honest, most of us have had those same kinds of thoughts, haven't we? We've been disappointed with something that we felt like God has done or left undone. 
And we're ready to tell him what he needs to do to fix it. And now Job is not only called God Satan, he wants God to answer to him about how to administer everything. In other words, Job says, I'm God and you're not. And when both of these things happen, God breaks the silence that he's kept for 35 chapters, and he speaks to Job in a whirlwind, a tornado. That'll get your attention. And for the first time in the story, Job sees what we, the readers, have seen from the very beginning of the story, and that is that what's going on in Job's life is not punishment, it's not bad luck, it's not God, it's part of a cosmic struggle between good and evil in the heavenly realms, and there's a whole lot more going on than Job even suspects. And with nothing but love, tough love, but love nonetheless, the Lord speaks to Job and says, Who is this without knowledge who is questioning my plans? Get ready to defend yourself, bub. You've been talking, you've been asking me questions. I have a few for you, and I'm sure you have an answer. Where were you when I laid out the foundations of the earth, huh? Now, years ago, when my children were in high school, one of them got mad at me because I was being unreasonable and insisting that they do their homework and complete their chores and observe a curfew. And after a dramatic display of disgust at me, they announced, as soon as I'm 18, I'm leaving. And I said, I hope you won't, because I love you dearly, and I want only the best for you. But if you choose to go, please understand, the furniture in your room is mine, (laughs) and the car you drive is mine. And the food you eat is a gift from me. And the room you live in is a gift from me. And the medical care that you have is a gift from me. And I give you all of that because I love you dearly and I'm your dad and I want to take care of you. And I know you're mad and you don't like my rules. And if, if indeed they are too oppressive, you can leave if you want. But please look at the bigger picture and not just what you're feeling right now because if you leave, the only things you're taking with you are your clothes because none of them fit me. Let the record show that child stayed. All of us have been disappointed with God. All of us have asked Him to do things that He either didn't do or didn't do as quickly as we wanted. All of us have run through that same range of emotions that Job did, and God does not mind our being disappointed with Him or even mad at Him. He knows that we don't know the big picture that all we can see and all we can feel are just a very few pixels of that big screen TV that is all of eternity. But when we start to think that we know more than God or accuse Him of incompetence or injustice or call Him our enemy, let's not be surprised if he says to us exactly what he said to Job. Who are you to question me? And where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? And if you're so smart, tell me how the galaxy fits together and why the planets don't bump into each other. God, our Father, says to us, if you want to set up your own universe, have at it. But understand this, everything you have and everything you are and everything that exists is a gift from me. And I give it freely because I love you. And as your father, I promise I will take care of you. And I know you're mad and I know you don't like the way I'm running the universe right now, but please look at the bigger picture and not just what you feel right now because if you leave me, you leave everything. You know those disaster movies where somebody freaks out and the hero has to slap the whiner and the whiner says, thanks, I needed that. That's exactly what God does with Job by asking him these questions. And Job answers, I know that you can do all things and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. And surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes, which is the Bible way of saying thanks. I needed that. When we feel overwhelmed 
by our circumstances or our emotions. And we start to freak out or to accuse God of being our enemy. God loves us enough to slap us across the face and open our eyes to see beyond our fear and our feelings. And when that happens, let's respond like God did. Whoa, sorry, God. I didn't understand. I was wrong to think you were Satan. You're God, and I'm not. And tell you what, here's the universe back. You can run it now. We will never comprehend the whole picture until we stand next to God and are able to see eternity from His perspective. And when we do, our response to all that we suffered in life is going to be, oh, that's what was going on. That's why that happened. Now I understand. And okay, God, good job. Until then, when our pain and our suffering and our fear and our feelings tempt us to accuse God of, of, of incompetence because He isn't doing what we think He ought to, and especially if we start considering Him our enemy, let's stop and take a breath and step back and try to remember there's a bigger picture to all of this than just what we think and what we feel, and there's probably a whole lot more going on than we presently perceive. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, God does know what He's doing, and He does have our life in His hand, and He is doing a relatively good job of running the universe. And when Job realizes that and hands his life back over to God, God rewards him. And at the end of the story, he has more children and more riches and more respect. And as we say yes to God and hand our lives back over to him, God rewards us with all he gave Job, plus peace in our hearts here and now and eternity with him and each other later. Life is hard, and until we get to heaven, we will never understand all of why it's that way. Life is hard, but God is good. And when life is hard, let's learn from Job and hang on to our faith, hope, and love because like Job, we know that our Redeemer lives. And in the end, we shall see Him face to face, face. and oh, how we long for that day. And until then, let's recognize that He's God and we're not. Now, to help us remember that, I have for you a prayer by John Wesley, the father of Methodism, but who was an Anglican priest till he died. It's in your bulletin, and I want you to listen to it the first time, and then if you dare, I will invite you to pray it with me. But just listen this first time. It's in your bulletin. It's going to be on the screen. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me work for you or be set aside for you. Let me be praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender everything to your glory and service. And now, O glorious and holy Father, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. Now, if you're not ready to pray that prayer, I understand and just stay seated and there's no shame in that. But if you dare and if you are willing to pray it, I invite you to stand and pray it with me. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me work for you or be set aside for you. Let me be praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender everything to your glory and service. 
And now, O glorious and holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. And let's remain standing. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on the screen and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Please kneel. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and all the clergy and people of the Episcopal Church. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the members of the Supreme Court and all appointed officials. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those listed in the bulletin and those we name now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, especially children of the Messiah Preschool, Messiah School for the Arts, those listed in the bulletin, and those we name now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces and those who serve as first responders, both here at home and abroad, especially those listed in the bulletin and those we name now. Dustin, Joyce, Hector, Nigel, Sawyer, James, Doug, Nicholas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Mike and Bobby Warren's daughter, Janet Robinson, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious all over our souls 
And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you've had a birthday or an anniversary, I invite you to the front so we can pray for you and bless you. We welcome our children back from Children's Church. Come on in, gang. Come on in. So birthdays, anniversaries. On that side, birthday's on this side. Thank you, Father, for CW, and for Amy, and for Katie Joy, and for Lily, for the gifts that they are in their families and the gifts that they are in this parish family. And we pray for each of them, Lord, that you would keep them healthy and whole in this next year, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and make them all you've created them to be. Amen. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Anniversaries over here. How many years? 30? 30? <laughs> right. How many years? Five. Five. Okay. <laughs> Five. It just seems like 30. I understand. You've got some explaining to do. How many years? 53. 53. There you go. 30, 30, real 30, real 30. Lord, thank you for Larry and Livia. Thank you for Harry and Janice. Thank you for Amy and John, for the gifts that they are to each other and the gifts that they are to us. And we pray for each of these couples, Lord, that you would fill them up to overflowing with your peace and your health and your kindness and your compassion and your power. And Lord, draw them ever closer to each other and to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Please introduce yourself to someone you don't know. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us gather back together. Back together.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and give himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give him thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth for you are the source of life and life you made us in your own image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. stand or kneel.
We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken to the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. In the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciple and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country. With all your sins, we may enter the ever, ev everlasting heritage of your Son and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of our creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gift of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and fill on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, God, we we thank thank you for for feeding us us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Be to God.